as you can see, that's way, way overfilled, way bad. That's not good. Ugh. How can I be such a dummy to overfill my oil that much? How? How? So basically, I had a little bit of a leak from my O-ring on my dipstick tube, so I replaced that. And uh, it looked like my oil was a little low after that, so I put some more oil in the car. And now, of course, I've got way too much oil, as you can see. Okay, so I, okay, so I accidentally overfilled my crankcase. And I don't know if you can see it on the dipstick, but I overfilled it by about one liter that's close to one quart over the upper limit for the dipstick. And that is a little bit dangerous. So what happens if you do overfill your, your car with engine oil? If the level is too high, the crankshaft could be touching the oil as it's rotating. This could add drag, um, affect your performance, but also, of course, it'll uh, froth the oil. In other words, it'll add air into the oil and then that will be pumped out throughout your motor and these tiny little air droplets will make it hard because they will compress they will make it hard for the oil to do its duty which is to form a film between your metal surfaces so they don't touch so it's important not to overfill your uh, crankcase don't make the same mistake I did however this happened to me and I've been driving like this not knowing any better for about two weeks that's not good but there was no appreciable damage that I could tell to my car and so I'm hoping I'm okay so we're gonna change the oil make sure the level is correct and hopefully that'll be the the end of it so the takeaway here is that don't overfill your oil uh, do checks of your oil on level ground not on a slope and if you do overfill it if you go anything under a quart or a liter you're probably going to be okay you should still still uh, adjust it back to normal but anything over a liter or a quart you could be in danger of definitely hurting your motor so don't do that okay so the first thing we got to do is jack up the car and safely secure it on jack stands and because my car is a little bit low i've got to go through this every time we've got to put it up on these wood blocks in order to fit the jack underneath the uh, the jacking point Kind of annoying, but that's the low life. All right, so you can see that the car is safely up on jack stands, as you do if you want to stay alive. And the next step is to drain the oil. Now, of course, I started the car. I let it run for a while just to get everything warmed up. And to help the oil drain out, I'm also gonna open up the oil cap, take this off. We're gonna change the oil filter as well with another Toyota oil filter. So let's get this messy job started. Okay, as you can see, I've already got the belly pans off already. And that consists of this plastic belly pan and, of course, the metal belly pan. And to take that off, you need uh, 10 mil for the small bolts, 10 mil socket, 10 mil socket and a 12 mil socket to take off the bolts. You also are gonna need this handy dandy little tool. This will help you take off these very annoying little clips you got to pull the heads up and then the whole thing comes out you got a lot of these clips so it's a very good idea to get one of these tools if you don't already have one now belly pan off then you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench to get off the oil pan bolt and start the messy process and of course you need your oil receptacle which We'll hopefully get most of this nasty stuff and 
you got to know that no matter what you do, how careful you are, you are going to get oil on you. There's no help for that. Uh, but you're going to save yourself some money if you do the oil change yourself. And then if you do it yourself, you know it's done right. Okay, there's our oil pan. There's our oil pan bolt, 14 mil. We're going to take this off. You got to be prepared because the oil is going to come out fast and furious. It's going to come out right here. So you got to position your pan to make sure that you're going to catch it all because it's terribly messy. Terribly messy indeed. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, I already loosened that already. It wasn't actually that loose. And the rest of the way you're gonna go by hand. I'm gonna try to try to keep my hand, try to keep my hand above so that the oil doesn't go on my hand. Try to keep it above. And keep the bolt in the hole as long as you can, tight until it's obviously loose, which it is right now. And there we go. Ooh. Okay, not too bad. Just a little splash out of the pan. Not too bad at all. And, ooh, that looks black. When's the last time I did an oil change? I don't actually remember. That's not good. Regular oil changes are how you keep your car, especially a Scion FRS, high revving motor like this. That's how you keep it young and healthy and vibrant. So we'll let this oil drain. It'll take a little while. We're also gonna change the oil filter. Okay, while the oil is draining, let's take a look at the oil pan bolt. This is stock, and of course there's a washer right there, and as you can see, it's quite uh, corroded. So whenever you change your oil, you must get a new washer. Then you can reuse the old bolt if you want to, but I'm not going to uh, reuse the old bolt, I mean. I got something special, I got something better. Next, you take off your oil filter here. Uh, I always recommend using Toyota oil filters. There's the number. Uh, they are conveniently located at the top on the FRS engine. Nothing could be easier. You just take this off, and sometimes you can take it off by hand, which is not going to happen here. In which case, you must use a specialized little tool like this, and this will help take it right off just like so and do this and do this and ooh, we got ooh, quite a bit of oil there gonna have to wipe that up anyway you can see my thermostatic oil cooler uh, which I had a video on installing. It's very easy install. It uses the engine coolant to help transfer heat from the oil, which goes through a sandwich plate right here, and that cools your oil by a few degrees. It definitely makes a difference. Easy to put on, relatively cheap. Do it. Okay, I've got the oil filter mating surfaces all cleaned up. No grit there, all clean, ready for my new oil filter. And it's almost all drained. You can see how easy this is. If you've got a driveway, you've got a jack stands, you can do this yourself. Why spend the money? Do it yourself, do it right. I've heard too many stories about these uh, quick uh, lube places or even dealerships who forget to tighten down oil filters, forget to tighten down oil pan bolts and all your oil goes out, your motor is wrecked, and then you've got a fight on your hands. So just avoid that, do it yourself. And if you do it yourself, you can upgrade with a few special things. I'm gonna show you. But first, a new oil filter from Toyota. Again, part number right there. Take her out, same as the old one I just took off. Now, it's a good idea to lubricate the rubber gasket here so that it goes on. Actually, actually, this is pre-lubed. Nothing better than pre-lube. This is pre-lube from the factory. There you go, Toyota. That's why you get a Toyota oil filter. And simply spin it back on. Spin it back on. And rotate by hand until you can see that. Okay, I can't quite do it. Anyway, rotate until it's very tight, hand tight, and that's all you gotta do. Just hand tight, hand tight. Okay, the oil is all drained. Time to put the oil pan bolt back in with a new gasket. This is the part number for the gasket from
Toyota right there, but I'm not going to use the oil, oil pan. I'm going to use this. Yes, this is a little thing that's special. This is an oil drain plug from Mishimoto, a very good high quality company. And this is a magnetic oil pan plug bolt. It's going to attract any metal particles that's in your oil and help protect your motor from those metal particles, which are bad for it. So this is very cheap insurance. I think this is like 20 bucks. No, maybe $17, maybe 15, I don't know. But anyway, there's, there's the part number, as you can see. And yeah, get this cheap insurance, just a little bit of extra insurance, makes your car that much cooler. And they give you a decal. Let's see, where's the decal? Okay. Anyway. And they give you a decal which you can put on your underneath your hood. That's the best part. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Oh, that is in there. Good. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, there is the Mishimoto oil pan bolt. So you've got the big M for Mishimoto so that anybody who's underneath your car will know that you are a true enthusiast because you have got this. There's the magnet that's going to attract metal particles. And as you can see, it's got a different size bolt head compared to the stock. Stock is a lot smaller and it also comes with its own gasket ready to go. So this is simply a bolt-on affair. Sorry. Okay, that's a pretty good magnet right there. Look at that. Now actually this bolt head is actually uh, quite big. This is actually, you're gonna need a you're gonna need a, a, a 24 millimeter socket to actually put this on, which is, I don't know why it's so big, but anyway, that's what you're gonna need. Actually, I just looked a little closer at the Mishimoto Moto oil pan bolt, and I noticed that the gasket looks a little wider. The metal gasket looks a lot bigger than the stock one, and I was concerned if it was going to actually seal properly, but then I noticed that on the inner part of this metal gasket, you probably can't see it there, but on the inner part, right, this black area right where my fingernail is, is actually rubber. Rubber all the way to the center here. So it's a combination rubber and metal uh, gasket. So that's very impressive. Uh, okay, just looking up the Mishimoto magnetic oil pan, and it is made of aluminum made with a neodymium, whatever, magnet. And the name of that seal is called a Doughty, D-O-W-T-Y, oil seal. That's very cool. And 15 pounds torque to tighten that bolt, so not very much. Okay, that looks awesome. Maybe I'll leave the uh, belly pans off so everyone can see my new Mishimoto oil pan bolt. Mm, no, that's not a good idea. Okay, time to put the oil back in the car. Now we're gonna use zero weight 20 as required, full synthetic. And of course, I'm gonna use Mobile One. Everybody has their different brands. I'm gonna use Mobile One synthetic. And this FRS takes about 5.5 liters of oil when you change the oil filter as well. I'm saying liters because I'm up in Canada. That's what we use. So I'm going to use this one, which is 4.73 liters, and some of this. So I put the whole jug of oil in the motor, and I like to fill up till I can see some activity on the dipstick, which I can see right there. I don't know if you can, because it's got brand new oil. It's nice and clear. But it's about halfway between the fill, the full, and add uh, circles there, our holes. And then I'm gonna put the car on the ground, idle it, and do the final fill up, because I don't wanna overfill it again, so I'll do the final fill up uh, after. So now let's start the car, check for any leaks. There's our little oil symbol. We want that to go away as soon as we start the car. Our 
very soon after we start the car. And there you go. Went away right away. Oh, and by the way, that engine light is for a small evaporative system control leak. Very, very small. I'm working on that. It doesn't affect the drivability of the car at all. No leak. It's good. And what do you think of my DC Sports uh, equal length headers? These are fantastic headers. I put these on a number of years ago. I think I made a video about that. These are great headers. No leaks. They fit perfectly. It's been years. And of course, if you don't want too much of that Subaru uh, Boxer Rumble, which I personally did not want, these are the headers to get. Okay, there you go. I changed my oil to get the level correct back to where it's supposed to be. I also added a Mishimoto magnetic oil pan bolt for added security. That's something that everyone should do. Links to that down below. And thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time. Electric supercharger, electric supercharger, electric supercharger.